Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about science and math. I've been documenting false and misleading statistics in climate science for years, and now I'm starting to see the same pattern with COVID-19. This graph from the Arizona Department of Health Services shows the number of COVID-19 cases that are hospitalized by date of hospitalization. The graph shows that there was a huge spike in hospitalizations in Arizona during the second week in July. This graph is scary. That surge must have been overwhelming to hospitals in Arizona. Now let's look at the hospital utilization data. This graph, also from the same Arizona Department of Health Services website, does not show the spike. This graph shows adult intensive care unit beds in use, and you can see starting in the middle of July, the number of beds in use actually declined. Now let's look at the graph for emergency department beds in use. They're less than 40%, and once again, there's no spike in the middle of July. This graph shows total inpatient beds in use in Arizona, and once again, we see a decline since the middle of July. So where's the spike? According to the first graph, there were thousands of new COVID-19 patients pouring into Arizona hospitals in mid-July. But the number of beds in use in Arizona didn't increase. So where did these thousands of patients go? This sort of alarming graph is regularly used by the press to drive politicians insane. Yet there's very little evidence or reason to believe that this spike is real. Now let's look at Florida. The data seems to show that there's been a huge increase in the number of deaths in Florida. According to this graph, Florida has seen about 250 deaths per day. But if we go to the state of Florida website, we don't see that. That website shows a peak of about 130 deaths per day and has been fairly steady for the last few weeks. So what's causing this spike? It's very likely that constant rule changes are adding new deaths from the past and they're all being counted in the last few days. So what is likely happening is that many of the deaths shown in these tall spikes here actually occurred in prior weeks. Once again, these constant rule changes are being used to drive politicians insane. Here's a closer look at the graph from the state of Florida website. Resident deaths by date of death. There doesn't appear to be the huge spike which was shown in the other graph. Now let's look at Texas. Like Florida, we see a huge spike over the last few weeks in the number of deaths. But if we go to the state of Texas website, it appears that this spike occurred during June, and that during July there hasn't been any large spike. So it's likely that a lot of these recent deaths are due to rule changes, and many of these deaths probably occurred during prior weeks. The Texas Medical Center, which is right across the street from where I went to school at Rice University in Houston, showed a huge spike in hospitalizations after the massive BLM protests. George Floyd was born in Houston, so there were tens of thousands of protesters down there day after day leading up to his funeral. And by early July, the Texas Medical Center was reporting that they had a huge number of very sick young people. There's a high probability that a lot of these young people were at the BLM protests, and they thought that wearing a piece of cloth over their face was going to keep them safe. But unfortunately, doctors are not allowed to ask whether people were at the BLM protests, because for some reason that's considered to be a sacred activity. Dr. Fauci had no problem telling people not to go to Trump rallies, but he never told people not to go to these massive BLM protests. The final state I'm going to look at is Wyoming, which also appears to be having an increase in the number of cases. This has lots of people here very scared. I was over at the farmer's market in Cheyenne this morning, and half the people running around in this huge open outdoor space with masks covering their faces. Now let's look at the testing data from the state of Wyoming website, and we can see what's actually going on. There's been a large increase in testing over the last few months. But the orange line is the important one. That's the percent positive. And that's been going down recently and has actually been close to zero. We're not actually having a spike in Wyoming, but by increasing the amount of testing, lots of propaganda is being generated. This is the graph of daily deaths in Wyoming. There's only been 25 total, and there certainly hasn't been a recent spike. We've had 25 COVID-19 deaths, which is much less than the typical 80 flu and pneumonia deaths. 
Yet I'm seeing a lot of scared people who've been scared by propaganda, like that coming from our Congresswoman Liz Cheney. Fear is not healthy and does not lead people to make rational decisions. I don't like being around scared people, so now I do all of my in-store shopping at Las Rosas Market. And I love Goya products. Toto doesn't particularly like coconut water, but he does love pulling back the curtain on junk science. You can visit him on the web at realclimatescience.com.